right. I think we are live. So welcome, everybody. Welcome to Backstage, uh, Backstage New Formula for 2021. Um, as you may know, Backstage from last year, we have started small, uh, middle of, uh, of last year, and we have started by creating some interviews because we wanted to go uh, with the site xboxquad.fr. Uh, to go to the studio and the developers to talk about the games. And this year, we because we received a lot of really great feedback from all the viewers and they wanted to do more and to have the possibility to, to, to interact with the, the studios and the developers, we decided to expand it a bit and uh, to create some new content this year to provide you some things like we are doing tonight. So live streams. Uh, we will be playing some games uh, together with the, the game creator and uh, it's it's really an exciting project. And to start this new concept, um, uh, we will be talking about one of the, the most amazing game that has been released uh, last year. Uh, this game is Call of the Sea. Uh, created by the studio Out of the Blue Games. It's a game which is graphically uh, great. Uh, it has a fantastic storyline, some really nice puzzles. And for that, I'm joined by two nice guests. The first, ladies first, I will start with uh, Tatiana. I'm Tat with Tatiana Delgado from Out of the Blue Game. Hi, Tatiana. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, thank you. Thank you for the invitation and the chance of being here to talk about Call of the Sea. Yeah, th thanks a lot for joining. It's it's really, really great to, uh, to have you and to be able to play the game with you and uh, to, to comment a bit the, the, the first minutes. It will be, uh, it will be cool. And uh, also with me is Yuki from Xbox Squad. Hello, Yuki. How are you? Um, so Yuki will be uh, helping in uh, managing all the, the aspects of the of the streams because uh, in some minutes I will have the pleasure to yeah all right uh, I've heard that I don't have any sound for Yuki the first technical problems are already there yeah, you want, I can talk a bit about the game while yes. you are trying to... <laughs> yes, I will ask you to introduce yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure okay. you, you've been asked that hundreds of times lately, but uh, one last time, please. <laughs> okay. So, well, I'm Tatiana Delgado, and I've been working in the games industry since the year 2000, when I started as a game designer. And since then, I had the chance of working in several platforms, uh, making games for consoles, um, uh, PC, web, mobile. And around the year 2016, I felt that I needed something more. I needed to to get back the the joy of making games. I, it's something that I, I lost along the way. So I decided to create my first company with uh, some friends that was uh, dedicated to create uh, virtual reality games. And we released two games, uh, Dedalus and Red Matter. And Red Matter was uh, a game I really, really enjoyed making because it's, it's a narrative puzzle game and it's my favorite genre. So when the company decided what to do next, uh, we had a bit of difference between the the people that was at the company at the time. So I decided I had very clear in my mind that I wanted to continue making games with a story and puzzles. So that's why I created a, Out of the Blue with my business partner, Manuel Fernandez. And we launched a Call of the Sea that is, uh, as a, I said, a, it's a narrative, a game that relies a lot on, on narrative story to tell and also has puzzles because we love puzzles. Okay. <laughs> so let's have a 
try now. Do we have Yuki back in the... No, I see nothing in the chat. Can you hear Yuki? Well, we have our, our first puzzle here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Just for the rest, it's uh, it's going okay. You can use a notepad and I put like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, ah, he's prepared, he's prepared. <laughs> I'm reading on the chat that we can hear the call of the sea, but not you. <laughs> and thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to work on my accent. Uh, I'm trying to improve my English, but I, it seems I cannot get rid of my, my accent. No, it's, it's, it's pretty good, pretty nice. <laughs> Okay, while we are trying to solve that, um, Tatiana, the last time we've talked was just before the release of the game. I think it was really a couple of days before the, the game has, has been released. Now we are after, and uh, I think the the reception from the, the players was, uh, was great. Can you tell us a bit what happened uh, on, the, on the launch day? Were you expecting such a success? Because from everything I've read, it was quite a huge success. Well, the, we didn't know what was going to happen. You never know, even if you you think you have done a right, uh, a good job, you never know if your uh, game is going to connect uh, with the people. So we were really, really nervous. Um, because we were releasing on Game Pass at 1 a.m. in in Spain, we were up until very late just to be sure everything was okay. Yeah. And then we went to sleep uh, because we knew the reviews was were going to to start happening on the morning. So I think I slept almost nothing. I was super yeah. nervous. And I remember uh, my husband uh, that is working on the game as the writer. He was saying like, I, I woke up. Uh, he said. We got a nine from IGN. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and from there, everything was really great. So the team was really, really happy and excited. And we started getting the, the good uh, news. But as I said, uh, something that you never know how it's going to go. Uh, oh, yes, yes. And uh, and you receive also some, some prizes. I think IGN, because you were talking about IGN, uh, you were best uh indie oh no best xbox exclusive game yeah mm -hmm. ah, that's that's, uh, that's that's awesome for a small indie game like we are imagine we are like the best xbox exclusive of 2020 wow <laughs> oh, yeah. we cannot believe that i was just remembering that <clears throat> we got the very good reviews from the press but i think what we are very happy with is that play, uh, people that are playing the game are recommending it to other uh, players and are telling us how much they love the game. So I think I, I, this is the the best uh, reward as game developers we can get. I, the the players enjoying the game. So we we are getting a lot of messages and and that makes uh, us very happy. And uh, one thing I've noticed is that because we took a um, a gamble there that we make the difficult. Uh, difficulty of the puzzles a bit higher than is usually in games uh, nowadays <clears throat> and it has worked uh, very well and one pattern we are noticing is that people is playing it together like we did in the old times like uh, playing together and trying to solve the puzzles together even playing with their partners that never played a game before and this is amazing because they they are enjoying the game together and I think that's what uh, makes us really, really happy about the the success of the game. Okay. So while waiting, I think I will start the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. Okay. Let's go to the game. I think okay. while Yuki, that's your your mission of uh, tonight is reconnect with sound and 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 webcam. OK. 
Okay, so here we go. Yes, the, the game is in French on my side, but of course the so everything is um, is spoken in English. Ah, Yuki's back. But I don't know if we have any sound. Yuki, can you tell us something? Is it working? Now? I think it's working. I see things moving on my screen, so. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So we can hear me. Yes. <laughs> so so you can start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! It only took twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so bad for a first one. It's not so bad. Okay, the sound of the game is a bit too high. I will reduce it somehow. Yeah. The Ton of the game seems to be a little high. So tell us in the chat if everything is working fine and if we can finally start that beautiful game. Working perfectly. Excellent. So I think it's about time that we start. So just to remind it, yes, everyone, yes, please. we're playing on the on the Series X. Yeah. <laughs> just as the boy is saying, we're playing on the Xbox Series X. So the game runs in 4K 60 FPS, right, Tatiana? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's correct. OK. With that uh, specific uh, artistic direction that that reminds us a lot of uh, another uh, another game like Sea of Thieves, especially in uh, in this first level. Yeah, yeah, it was one of the references. We got inspiration from Firewatch, as you can see in the lights and the colors, and also Th Sea of Thieves and The Witness. For the visual part, so yeah, it's good that you noticed because it was um, a reference. Yes, and uh, and voice acting as well for the Firewatch. Yeah, we got uh, because we really love the work of CC Jones, the actress on Firewatch. See the way she built the character with only her voice and it was perfect uh, for a game like Call of the Sea because you never see Nora during the game. So we wanted an actress that could be, um, bring the character uh, to life with just her voice and and we we think she did an amazing job <laughs> on the on the game. Yeah, she she really did great. Um, bo both actors. It was yeah. really really good. And yeah, uh, uh Lawenthal uh, he's the Spider-Man in the voice of Spider-Man, so he's amazing too. Yes, and you've organized something very cool just after the the release. Uh, that um, so the, the, they have organized. Um, how do you call that? They were they were re redoing the the re reading. Sorry, the the scripts of the of the game. Uh, and yeah. dressed with the, the 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 characters in the game, so it was. Uh... Yeah, it it was actually uh, we did some prequel, so something that happens before the game. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was letters that uh, both Nora sent to Harry and Harry to Nora, and they were reading them aloud, and they even cosplayed the the characters. So it's amazing, and if you want, I recommend everybody if you want to know more about the game. Just uh, watch it because it's it's great to see them talking uh, through the characters. Yeah, yeah, I, I've I've watched it and uh, I've seen you and I, I think it was very emotional. <laughs> yeah, because uh, seeing them <laughs> uh, perform like they do and seeing because when we record the voices, you we, we do it through Skype. They have a booth uh, at their homes, but you never actually see their faces. You just hear the voice and see their faces and how they perform and the, the nice uh, things they say about the game because they really enjoy it, being part of it. It was like poof, <laughs> a lot of emotions going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, really, really. 
So let's start with a new game. Um, I will keep the, the, the subtitles in French because we have also some French uh, people in. And let's go. Yeah, this this those first words you already know where 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 you step in, because uh, yeah, the, the the Cthulhu influence and the inspiration <laughs> from the beginning. I didn't know it was so. When I started the game, I was not expecting to see it so 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 early in the game. So it was really something <laughs> really nice from the beginning. And then we start underwater. So it's already full of little details that you have placed a bit everywhere. Yeah, we love details and because we as, a, as players love to, when we play, explore every corner uh, <laughs> of the levels. So we placed for people like us a lot of details and everything has a meaning even though you most of the people that are not going to to notice that and it doesn't matter if you don't notice but for example in this level there is a clock on the wall and it has this a one, certain yeah. time and it's something it means something but most of the people that just didn't probably don't notice that and it's okay but as i said we have a lot of details we're a bit crazy about that <laughs> about the meaning of things because uh, if someone is able to connect all the dots in these like secondary things yeah. i think they will enjoy it a lot so you mean it has a, a meaning that we should discover later on in the game yeah you can discover it later okay it's because... not important but in that hour means something Yes, but that's what also what I like in that game okay. is that you have you have multiple levels of of, of storyline, so you can you can go directly and f just follow the main story, but you have also all those uh, little Yuki is gone again. <laughs> you also all, all, have all those little details that you can find that are not super important. If you don't find them, you will not prog it will not block you from from progressing. But it gives all that atmosphere that is uh, this really, really um, enjoyable. So now, I'm <laughs> now that you see that you 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 just said that uh, there is something strange or something meaningful with that clock. I'm I, because I have done the, the <laughs> two times <laughs> and I cannot find what it is. Hmm. <laughs> Because I remember in every when I played the game, I saw the clock, but... but uh... <laughs> I'm having such delay, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> Yeah, those are things that uh, that we will find back later on in the game. So I was w wondering, Tatiana, when creating a game like uh, like Call of the Sea. Um, do you envision directly the first scene of the game, or uh, does it become more precise uh, the, the more you work on it? The way we work on a game like this is we start um, with what we call the high level design. It's like uh, you have the whole game, but in very low detail. 
you know what's going to happen along mm -hmm. the game in the story you know what's happened more or less how many levels you're going to get and how many puzzles and at that moment you start to notice the you see the pattern of the of the game and then when we start detailing all, all the levels you know how the the game is going to start more or less but usually we don't start with the first level uh, we start with the the second so we in in this case we started with the the next uh, not the, uh, the cup we start on the island <laughs> i don't want to spoil but i don't want to <laughs> so we started with the level in the island and we left the we knew what was going to happen more or okay. less but we wanted to start with a bit of the levels and then once we have the story more uh, down to earth down to earth is a uh, more defined yeah <laughs> we start, we went back to the the yeah. intro to make it uh, more consistent and tune it a bit okay i see so now ludo as i see we're back on the we're we're on a boat right you're in your cabin yeah it was then a dream i was not really i was not really uh, swimming underwater with no breath problems so now we are back on the <laughs> boat and we have this uh -huh. we need a code Like so we have a question from the oh, yes. chat that asks. Um... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Tatiana. No, no. Uh, please go ahead, and then I can. Explain. Oh, <laughs> so he was asking, uh, did you plan for a physical release of the game? Yeah, uh, it's something. Or was we it never know, a uh, We we would love to have a a physical release. Yeah, that's something. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I would love to. So we will see how the game goes. Okay. My dream is to have a, a special edition with a lot of cool things, and but I don't know. There's something we will see. Okay. It depends maybe on the uh, the success of the game. But talking about the success of the game, do we, do you have some some figures about how many people have started the games and those kind of things? That's something you. You know more or less. We don't know, want a precise number, but a rough order <laughs> yeah. of magnitude. Yeah, we. I cannot uh, share the numbers, but we are. It's a lot of people um, yeah. being released at the same time that a huge game like was uh, Cyberpunk. It's amazing that we got <laughs> so many people playing the game. So we are really happy about the. And uh, we're also very happy of being part of Game Pass. <laughs> because it has allowed us to to be visible and a lot of give the chance to a lot of people to to know the game and play it and then recommend it to other people so we are really really happy with that yeah yeah in terms of visibility it was great and uh, yeah as we as we said during the interview yeah the, the timing with the, the release of cyberpunk was not the most optimal one i would say but uh i think it has not really influenced the uh, the, the launch of the, the of Call of the Sea, I guess. Yeah, we didn't knew what was going to happen, but I think it worked pretty well because perhaps even people are waiting for were waiting for patches for Cyberpunk, so they were playing Call of the Sea in the meantime. It was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it it was above your expectations. I don't know if you set up some expectation prior to relaunching re a game, if you say, okay, we, we want to reach that number of players or those kind of things. Yeah, I think it's above uh, our okay. expectations. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, not because we thought the game was bad, but because being, puzzle games are not a popular genre. It's difficult to, to get a lot of people playing this genre. And so, you never know with these games. Um, I think we are have been lucky. Uh, people love the story. People love the challenge of the puzzle. So yeah. I think it worked pretty well. Yeah, it has really 
many many aspects that are really appealing for the game first graphically it's uh, it's really really nice and um, storyline with those different levels as i was talking before it's uh, it's also it's also really great maybe things that we do not find in other puzzle games that are just focused on puzzles here we, we, you manage i think to integrate a lot of a lot of things a lot of influences uh, and a lot of uh, different uh, aspects of the game yeah i think we we were lucky to do the <laughs> to put all the, the things we love about games in in one uh, product like it's a bit of the old time classic adventure games and also a bit of mist and ribbon so we put together <laughs> everything and try to to make the game we would have loved to play okay have you done mist have you played it have you finished it <laughs> because <laughs> what uh, mist you yes know? yes yes i i finished the uh, until mist for all the games okay and i I started the uh, five. I remember I didn't like it too much because it was a bit different. Mm -hmm. But I, I really love all the Mist, Riven, Exile, and huge okay. fan of those games. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, Call of Duty is not as hard as, as Mist. It's not as hard. We wanted mm -hmm. to bring it to a broader audience. So we, we made it a bit. It was one decision we made at the beginning. like. We want puzzles, we want people to, to think, but we don't want them to be as difficult as, as Myst. We are, we are ourselves are very hardcore puzzle gamers, but we wanted to perhaps to make this game someone that doesn't uh, haven't played a, a puzzle game before to these games. And if they enjoy this, perhaps they, it's a jump to a, a missed game or other more difficult game. So that was a bit our, our plan. Okay. So back to the okay. game. On, on YouTube. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. On YouTube, I've had a, a few a few questions uh, around the game, uh, and especially from the from the start. Um, has the the Bioshock franchise uh, been an also an an inspiration for the game? Uh, yeah, a bit in regards of yeah, visually it's uh, also one of the uh, of the art style being underwater, and also the mm. environmental storytelling. Uh, because in our game, being a, a game where you it's based on exploring and you have to figure out things that right, happen okay. in your the hat sorry discover what had happened as a kind of detective mm. so we have to put every asset very carefully and they are had to be there because of something so we use we rely a lot on environmental storytelling and placing everything where it should be yeah you, we can feel that in the scenery that everything has been handcrafted um and, and and every decision that has been made is, is really thought through uh, the whole process and uh, and thinking about the bigger picture. Yeah, and we have been very lucky to have uh, an art uh, team that is fantastic. They they do they have done every asset with so much care. It's like if you see around everything even the smallest and more <laughs> insignificant asset it has a lot of uh, care put on them it's like a, a character <laughs> on, on themselves so it's amazing yeah we can see it here. Uh, it's really full of details have... please uh <laughs> yeah completely yeah we also had a, a other questions my bad <laughs> um uh, there was fred also asking if it was your first game that you produced so in fact, it's not. <laughs> it's not. This is the the third game I been on the <laughs> role. I take care of the design and narrative. You could say I'm the design director or creative director. So this is my third game. The first with Out of the Blue, but the third I'm mm -hmm. directing. And the two previous were ones were Dedalus and Red Matter for VR. Um, before that, I did a lot of game for others. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see we have 
people from all over the world. We have Unati from India. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Unati. And he or she is currently in chapter three. So we will not spoil it at all. So okay. we'll try to stay on, on the... On the yeah, I, I don't think we'll make it up to chapter three. <laughs> <laughs> so while you were talking, I've I've solved the first puzzle. I managed to open that uh, suitcase. And there I find several things. Harry Everhart, my husband, my partner, and my dear old pal. A brass key with a letter... Yeah, these okay. first levels were a bit... We can we use them to set the story and the mood of the game, and also to teach the player the the game mechanics. So the, this small puzzle is like a tutorial for how the game is going to be. You need to use the journal, you need to explore around, mm -hmm. but like a very cozy, small environment, so you don't feel overwhelmed with a lot of things to do. Okay. So that, that's how we build the game, and then you can start the real thing. <laughs> okay, we will. <laughs> dive soon into the real thing we we'll just correct things that might be interesting by later in the game yeah we, you said that yeah the, the the graphical artists they, they have crafted everything uh with heart and it's you can see it you can see it yeah i feel like the team was ha, has been feeling most of the people ha uh, are veterans. They've been more than 10 years in, in the game industry and they really wanted to make something that they feel proud of. So they, when they had the chance of working on Call of the Sea, everybody was putting their souls and like with a lot of, um, like they wanted to give their best because they really loved what what they were doing and you can tell that because you can see it in the game everything is done with a lot of care and we're thinking about all the details so i'm really grateful for the team and um, all the effort that they put in the game all right On, the, on that note, remind us how many you are in in out of the uh, out of the blue games. Yeah, we we are ten at this moment. Um, yeah. During the production, we I think we were between 12, 13, because we hired some freelancers, three D artists and mm -hmm. an animator. So they were doing the parts of the production at certain moments, and then they stopped working. But the core team is like around ten people. Okay, so so quite a small team for for yet <laughs> quite an an ambitious game. Yeah, when you see the game, you there's a lot of people that say, "How could you make this with uh, ten people?" Because uh, other games, like I don't know, I, they usually for a game like this, you can see thirty people, forty people, and yeah, and I think it's because. Uh, they have a, a lot of talent and also they have a lot of experience. Yeah. So people is able to be very focused. We didn't iterate too much because we knew what we, we wanted to do. We prototype a lot and then we make the game once we get all the risk uh, very, very low. So I think that's why we were able to manage to do a game like this because we are, it only took uh, one year and a half for us to, to do it. So it's also yeah, that is answer. super short. <laughs> that is really short for you for, for such a small team uh, to, to make such a game. Um, th there must have been some kind of magic that happened at some point <laughs> to, to, manage to produce this content. As I said, I think uh, the team, we one another thing that has a uh, benefit, uh, been a benefit for us is that we use we work uh, remote, but before COVID. So we were used to, to work from home. So when COVID happened, and it didn't change anything for us. Uh, we were able to keep the pacing of the production at the same uh, speed. And as I said, uh, we knew we did this high level design. We knew how big the game was going to be, what we were able to do, and took decisions to be able to get the most being very practical 
and that's how <laughs> we were able to succeed in that regard. Yeah, that's really amazing that uh, that's with, incredible. With, with such an organization, which is a bit different than what we we see uh, commonly, you you, you manage to uh, to create such a such a game in a so small time frame with with a little team. So it's uh, it's great. And then we arrived on an island. Well, I can tell you from what I see in, in the comments, everyone uh, everyone loves the art style and uh, and, and all the, the environment and finds everything beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we wanted to craft some, a place like in those games like Mist or even you, there were places so beautiful. You wanted to spend hours there. And this is something we had in mind. We made a nice and calm environment so you can uh, peacefully explore and take your time to find the clues and solve the puzzles. So that was one of the reasons behind the, this art style. And I think uh, we have been lucky because with this decision that make a, makes us stand a bit out of the uh, next gen uh, catalog or lineup, because most of the mm -hmm. next gen games are very realistic and have more not saturated colors, more uh, colors are a bit more uh, realistic. <laughs> and I think when you see color the seas, it stand out a bit. So I think it was a good decision on that side too. Yeah, it's a, <clears throat> it's quite different. relaxing environment when you arrive on that island. That's 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 pretty good with with the cold weather that we are suffering from for the moment. It's <laughs> nice to come back on that island. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we also have a question more on the on the technical aspects uh, and and software used. Um, for for the three D artist, what was it? What kind of software was used to create the asset? Was it under Blender, uh, under uh, another software? We used, uh, as I said, we hired freelancers for some mm -hmm. uh, three um, the asset three D assets and other uh, uh, for the team. So we ch we let them choose the the software they are most comfortable with and then export it to Unreal. So I believe most of them use Blender or 3D Max. Mm, OK. Well, the, the two main standards of the industry, so. <laughs> OK, so I already found the box. And with the same initials that were on the, the key that I found in the boat, so. I'm pretty good in puzzle games. It almost seems like it's not your first time, Ludo. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but all the puzzles are not that uh, that that easy, so it's it's really gradual, and. Uh, yeah, sometimes I had some hard time. I can, I can say, and maybe I can tell the story. Tatiana, you know about it, because I, <laughs> I've been <laughs> testing. I've been testing the game uh, just a couple of days before it's released, and uh, and we were already in contact. So I've done the the interview, and I don't know. I was progressing quite well in the game, so I feel very proud of me. I was uh, fixing all and solving all the the puzzles, and and I got stuck. On one of them, probably the most complicated one from from what we have seen later on, and uh, and I got stuck on that one, and I spent probably more than two hours trying to solve it. And um, so it was late, and uh, it was it was after midnight. It was probably uh, yeah one one or two o'clock in the morning. And and the, and the game was not uh, was not released yet, so maybe there might have been some bugs and those kind of things. So I, I thought I really thought that I've broken the game by doing something wrong, and then I, I was I was blocked, and uh, I was so frustrated that I've sent a, a mail to Tatiana at two in the morning, <laughs> saying, <laughs> "Yeah, you know, there's something wrong maybe with the game," and uh, 
<laughs> and then uh, and then I went. It wasn't you. <laughs> yeah, no, it was not. It was not the game. And then I went to bed. And probably I was so so frustrated and so focused on the on, on on this puzzle that I must have been dreaming about it. And when I woke up in the morning, I had the solution. So I jumped out of the bed and I ran to the to the console and I could solve it directly. And uh, and then I opened my phone. I saw that Tatiana replied very kindly with all the explanation <laughs> of the puzzle. So it was <laughs> it was quite uh, quite fun. No, but this is amazing, uh, and this is the kind of feelings I usually got for from those whole games or classics. And it's amazing that sometimes you need just to stop and let your mind get fresh, and then you suddenly get everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and I think I recommend when you play this game, you have to not start whenever you find something, keep exploring if you don't understand what you have in front of you. You need to gather a lot of information before and then start thinking. And usually the puzzles are not as hard as, as they seem. Yeah, exactly. It's it's really a matter yeah. of observation, exploration, finding all the different clues all over and uh, and then the, 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 the picture creates it by itself. And uh, and that works for the puzzles, but that works also for the, the storyline. Mm -hmm. Because we will see later on. Mm -hmm that we will find some documents and pictures and uh, gradually we, we, we will understand what, what happened to the expedition. And uh, that, that's a very clever, clever way of doing it. And what happened to, to the husband of, uh, of the main character? Yeah. Well, that's, that's what we need to discover. Mm -hmm. We we had a question asking uh, if the game was gonna release maybe in uh, in the near future on uh, on PS4. Uh, this is something we cannot talk about. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So it's not a no, but it's neither a yes. <laughs> And uh, they, there was also uh, Unati that asked uh, if the main character was voiced uh, by Delilah but from uh, Firewatch. So yeah. you can confirm it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's um, is, uh, CC Jones. And she's, she's amazing. She did a performance. I remember one of the scenes that I don't want to spoil when she, she said, I'm going to read the, all the lines uh, at the same time, uh, one after other, because, you know, we have for the lines for the game uh excel sheet and and you can you they record one by one but for this it was like a batch of seven lines and she said i'm, I'm going to do the, all of them on a row and she started <laughs> and we were like oh, oh my god and we were almost crying there it was it's fun it's amazing <laughs> so it's <was> great <laughs> She was making a performance just for you. Yeah, it was like, wow. So I keep on exploring. And uh, uh, here it is. So yes, we haven't talked about that. So we have uh, the journal in which uh, Nora will collect every, every clue that uh, she finds and uh, every element. So which is also very helpful for, for the for the puzzle solving. So we don't have to go back and forth to, to find out what, what we need to do. So every important things will be recorded in the in the journal. So for yeah, instance, we, uh, sorry, please, please. No, the way we designed the journal was uh, because when I used to play games like puzzle games like Myst or The Witness or those games, I usually play with a note, uh, notepad and write yeah. things down. So I thought we could uh, do that job for the player, but not just ra write the solution. So I'm we were, we are just giving you the all information that you need, but then you ha need to think about that uh, information. It's not like hints or it's just information. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love how it's also really useful to um, to track your um, your progress in the game. 
Um, if ever you missed uh, some piece of information, you can basically see it through the journal that a few pages before you forgot something and you can really come back on your steps and go and find that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We we have like two parts of the journal. One is for the puzzles, just the puzzles, and the other for the story. And yeah, that's when the way we we decided to design everything. So it can be helpful if you just to let you know if you missed something of the story, mm. or just in case if you start start playing then uh, stop and you return a month later, you can read and know where you at the the moment where you were and all the important information about the story. Yeah, I, I remember this uh, this puzzle uh, trying to, to find the, the right combination <laughs> after finding all the all the pictures. Yeah, so we have found uh, here is one again. And so for find... these four puzzles, we actually there are two ways of solving them. It's fun because so I don't know a, a percentage of players solve it in one way and others in another way. I don't want to spoil it, but it's fun. Then it actually there are two ways of solving this one. <laughs> okay. Put it yeah, a bit uh, like a backup for 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 players because sometimes. You know, the the mind works differently for di different persons, so we wanted yeah. to give the chance of doing that. I can feel the air is... And, and how do you test those? Oh, sorry. Please. You yeah, yeah I, I was just asking. Each puzzle of the game has this um, two ways of solving, uh, or or multiple solving ways. No, only at the beginning, I think, uh, okay. because we it's a bit, a bit like also to follow the progress, you know, of, of the game. Mm. And then there's only yet one solution. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I was about to ask, how do you test those uh, those puzzles? How do you make sure that they are not too hard, not too easy, and have the right balance? Yeah, this is a very good question because there's no way when you design a puzzle, where there's always your instinct, instinct as a game designer, but you really need to test it with people before so the moment you have a prototype start uh, bringing players to to see how they react how they understand the clues how how they feel when they try to solve it in, if they enjoy it or they are blocked or and before covid we would bring friends and and see how they play now we do it uh, we either um, ask people to record themselves playing so we can hear how and see how they they react or we just play through skype we we make a skype call oh. and they play and we they share the screen and we see how how they play okay. but this is super important if you don't play test the, the puzzles you is it, I think it's impossible to be able to tune the difficulty for for the puzzles. And yeah. even if you make the more more you make them, the better the game is going to be. Yeah, because when you think about it, there's really not much any other way to uh, to fix and uh, and adjust the difficulty uh, of these puzzles and. The, the magic that that's in Call of the Sea is that each puzzle gradually really gets harder, but with never being too hard, so that you have to spend well maybe except the really the last few ones. Uh, <laughs> but le let's say from beginning to nearly the end, everyone can manage to get through without too much of a hassle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wanted. <clears throat> you see the the overall design of the game. Actually, as you said, the most difficult game is not, sorry, puzzle is not at the end, but at the, um, it's before. And in mm. that way you get like, uh, it's like the game is it speeds up because then after this very hard game uh, puzzle, you get uh, slightly less difficult. So you get, you go faster, you you feel that like you are going faster. And it it's a way of uh, working with the game pacing of the game. 
And this mm. is something that I've learned from Dave Grossman. He's a, the game designer okay. of Monkey Island, Day of the Tentacle. So <laughs> he's amazing. And when I was just beginning uh, my career, I, I wrote to him asking for advice. And he was very kind and he replied to my email. I thought he was not going to to reply at all. That's uh, awesome. He's uh, awesome. Uh, it's an advice he gave to me and I always have it in, in my mind. Like, you, it's better to not put the hardest puzzle at the end. Put it a bit earlier so then the, the ending is going to feel more nice. Okay, that's okay. interesting. That's a great piece of advice. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> I'm stuck already on the <laughs> the puzzle. Does the bird go? Oh, you can't be stuck. <laughs> Should yeah. I put the bird above the mountain? Where's the mountain again? Ah. You do know that in, in the worst scenario, we do have, have a physical human action replay from a game director. <laughs> <laughs> Who has all the solutions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's fun how many times I've played it. I, I cannot think about it, but I, I think I have like a hundred and 30 hours in Steam, only playing on, on the Steam version. So I don't know so, how many hundreds so, of time I uh, did this, this puzzle. So after it has been released, still 130 hours? No, no, before. before, before, ah, before. Uh, oh. mm -hmm. Yes. Before no one sees the, the Steam version, we have a, a Steam version there to test. OK. Um, I've been doing so many times. <laughs> <laughs> by spending so much time play play testing the game do you ever get maybe fed up or uh or just can't see uh, a chapter a scene or a part of the game yeah i think it's more like you start losing the perspective on the game mm -hmm. so there's a moment that it's like oh everything is super ugly everything is Oh, this yeah. is not going. Oh, it says this puzzle is horrible. And then you, it's good to then put people to play the game because you get their, yeah. the, a fresh perspective again. But I think this is a feeling you get at so at some point, like oh, <laughs> it's horrible, and yeah. then you overcome it. Yeah, <laughs> you need uh, to take a step back. <laughs> And this is for the game, a game that you have done in, in one year and a half. So you can, because you can imagine for for games that takes five, seven years to, to be produced, it must be yeah. complicated. Yeah, I think one of the most frustrating things that I found in my career in when I was working in, in other companies is like after a year or a year and a half, suddenly there is a decision to throw everything away and start again mm. or change a core mechanic that makes everything uh, different and you need to um, to change everything so i think that's uh, most of the people on on the team felt that way and i think that's why we wanted to um, to not change uh, crazy things and it sometimes it's hard because there is a game that is released that you see something very cool ah we could put that thing in our game and you have to not not listen at all to that because if you put that thing probably you are going to break everything in the game and and it's going to take a year a year, extra year on a couple of years and this is a lot of money and and time and frustration yeah. so that's why we wanted to to focus on on the decisions we made during pre-production and carry them on until the end okay yeah which is quite a, a bold move in uh, in today's video game production, where we we generally uh, start fresh uh, a year and a half or two years, just like you said, uh, in, in the game development, especially for big AAA titles or or even the smaller indie ones. So uh, that that that's quite fantastic that you managed to to really go through the whole process and stay stay true to to your first idea. 
Yeah, I think but because we have suffered a lot those kind of changes and we didn't want to, to suffer them again. Which is understandable. <laughs> um, one interesting thing that, uh, that you have played the, um, the recording is that uh, I have uh, been studying with uh, a lot of the Polynesian and Tahiti culture because I love it. Okay. That's why we you, we also chose this setting and I have uh, a teacher he uh, has a school, a national Polynesian school in, in Spain, and he's uh, bringing the Polynesian culture to and teaching a lot of, of it. So we wanted to include him. Probably you have not seen, but there are the plants, the birds, um, the flowers. There are uh, real flowers that you can find in Tahiti and those islands. And also he put me in contact with um, an actor from Tahiti. That is the one that puts uh, the voice to the, the Haroa, that is uh, the Polynesian character in the expedition. Yeah. And it was super cool. And I think it's nice to have this layer on trying to also teach something with the with the game. That's why also in the previous uh, level on the beach, uh, Nora is, is trying to teach a lot of what's an UNU, what are the symbols, what mm -hmm. is the, the birds. And yeah, we try to use it a bit so, like, as a cultural way of teaching people. And my, my teacher is is uh, super happy with uh, that we have done that with a video game. So he's really proud that we were able to put a bit of his culture in, in the game. OK, so th those symbols are, are real Polynesian symbols. Yeah. I okay. mean the fish, the mountain, the these kind of things. And if yeah. you go outside the the, the huts, oh, there is a you can see red plants outside yeah. mm -hmm. the house. They like are called outi. The red outi. Um, it's a plant that they used for protection. So it's uh, for good life for the gods. And they, uh, he told us that on every house they usually put the these out is like that so we put them in the game it's a very small detail that no one is going to notice but if someone knows about this culture and they see it i think they're going to appreciate oh yeah it's being ripped out of something else so you can see we are crazy about details <laughs> <laughs> i've seen harry keep even lester on track for bookkeeping he would never tear up a piece of valuable we had uh, another question around the 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 q and a so did, did you have s certain people in, in the team that were specifically uh, here for q and a testing or was everyone doing it more or less we had on the publisher side we have a qi person that was dedicated mm -hmm. to us helping us with the the proper looking for bugs and errors in the game from the beginning mm -hmm. of the game inside the team what we did uh, mostly the design team was trying to check for for uh, more th errors that someone that doesn't know the, about the game couldn't notice like if there is a, a picture that is not correct or or theme more design related and okay. then we had uh, when once the game was reaching a more finished stage we have a qa qa team that uh uh, outsource it, outsource it, <laughs> mm -hmm. that they take care of all the QA in every pl platform. So, yeah, we have a, a lot of QA going on. <laughs> okay. Well, there you have your answer, Fred. Uh, huh. I'm not sure you, you'll you be able to answer that one, but um, we also have an, a question about your, your partnership with Eggbox. Um, how, how did the game come up to be a, 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 a console exclusive, if you're able to answer that? <laughs> yeah, again, you know, uh, I cannot enter uh, I mean, into a lot of details, but uh, mm. we, uh, Rob Feud is the, our publisher and they have a very good relationship with Microsoft and they presented the game to them. And they really loved uh, the game, and then they offered us um, 
uh, the Game Pass and the exclusivity because they believed on, uh, on Call of the Sea and we were really happy to, to start this uh, relationship with them. Okay. So, so what was it? Was it Microsoft that came and uh, and offered it? Well, offered it to Raw Fury, who then offered it to you, or was it you that came to them? It's, it's more uh, Raw Fury had uh, conversations with Microsoft because they mm -hmm. handle a lot, a lot of games with them, and one mm -hmm. of them was, was Call of the Sea. So, I wasn't there. I'm not sure <laughs> how the conversation was uh, initiated, but. We know they really lo love the game. Um, they came to us with uh, this offer. Okay, okay. So uh, it, it's mostly the publisher that that deals yeah. with that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, it's I, we're really lucky to work with Rogue Fury because they are taking away a lot of uh, tasks that would. I think that's why we were able to focus on developing the game and everything else. They took care of it. So. It was fantastic to to work with them. Did Did you ever consider to maybe self publish yourself the game, or uh, was it from the start that you you wanted a, a publisher like Raw Fury? We wanted a, a publisher because okay. uh, for the the previous game uh, I mentioned, Red Matter, for example, it was we were funded by Oculus, but we did we had to do all the the publishing ourselves and it's a lot of work mm -hmm. dealing with PR marketing and it's super important to do those things and QA uh, uh, localization it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and we just wanted to focus on, on making the game that's the, what we like to do so <laughs> that's why we wanted a publisher <laughs> that's completely understandable then. <laughs> <laughs> So while you are talking, so I'm how still are you progressing solving puzzles. <laughs> it's it's going, it's going okay. It's going okay. I had some hard <laughs> time on a puzzle. <laughs> mm -hmm. My dear old ah yeah, and you, we have also those. I know you won't ever read this one, but I'm accustomed to writing you early. Yeah, a lot of notes, postcards. Then bring up some cinematics. And I think this level is a good example of, of how to approach the the puzzles because the the first time you explore the level, you're going to find a lot of things and some of them are not going to make any sense. But you have to. It, it's a way a bit like uh, the mist uh, or mostly the ribbon. That is the second part. Mm -hmm. Puzzles were designed where you start finding things that you don't understand and then suddenly it would make sense after you walk a, a bit and explore and put things together so this is a bit wa mm. how we design this this level so you just need to you can play a bit with the the things you you find but you need to to get continue exploring and try to make sense of, of the things yeah it's really that you need to to explore find everything Take your time, basically, and, uh, really and at some point time. everything comes together, and uh, and you know what to do most of, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> okay. It's funny also how um, pl playing Call of the Sea brought me back to to really those older games where um, you need to progress further. To, to sometimes come back in steps and and solve a, a puzzle that you first saw in the level, uh, which which has more in in modern games. I'm always afraid to to move too much forward and, and have like a loading screen and not being able to come back. Uh, where, whereas in Call of the Sea, you need to do so in order to to find a to find the solution. Yeah, we wanted to make very clear when the game was about to end. So, sorry, the level. 
but yeah. otherwise we open everything and let you explore uh, in the in the direction and uh, an however whenever uh, sorry <laughs> in the way you wanted <laughs> no to explore my english has started to collapse in my mind <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that begins. Who worries this much about their appearance in a picture? Yeah, so uh, there are really little items that uh, and and after after a while, while discovering all those items, you, you begin to to understand the personality of the different persons in the exp uh, expedition. So it's really uh the narration yeah. yeah we try to make uh, again i uh, put a lot of effort in every character has a different hand writing has a different paper uh, stationary so you, you can notice mm -hmm. which character is uh, and they have their personality so you can explore the room or, and understand what kind of character is it's something we did before in red matter where we make uh, we started experimenting with this and it's, a, it's also a place where everything is empty and you have to to build and try to to know what happened there and you need to communicate a lot of the personality of the character so we try to to take everything we learned in that game and put it here and i think um, it was then easier because we already knew what to look for much for games of chance. Not having much question in uh, in both chats. <laughs> People are, are maybe really enjoying uh, just watching the game <laughs> play through. It's some sort of Polynesian coat of arms. Is that an octopus. Yeah, just like you, just like you, you, you said, Nicholas. The the game is hypnotic. It, it the the environment really feels so real. You you just want to dive in. <laughs> yeah. I'm still discovering. What do I have in my journal? Okay. So, <clears throat> so it has collected all the different symbols mm -hmm. that are on the earth. <laughs> and uh, can I already? Someone in chat just said that uh, Xbox players are sad to not be able to appreciate the the art of Call of the Sea DLC uh, on console. <laughs> I know. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> we will try to figure out the way. Uh, if I remember correctly, Ludo, uh, you, you need to do something up on the on, up on the cliff. Yes, but I forgot to write all those in my journal. Sort of mm. so now they should come. Okay, and I'm still missing one one of the signs. But it was here, no? <laughs> yes, you see, you know what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, so Fred was asking if the game was patched for Series X, and uh, yes, it is from launch. Uh, you get to play it in 4K and 60 FPS. Ah, it was there. 
Yeah, and we're working now on a new patch that is going to be very, I hope very soon, that is going to add some accessibility options because we got mm -hmm. some some issues from people that get uh, motion sickness. So you can okay. adjust, you can remove the head bobbing, the camera lag, the blur, motion blur. So we are going to give a lot of options to players so they can uh, play the game as they want. And I think it's going to improve a lot. Okay. And, and is there still... For... That's great. No, sorry. sorry. So also for Windows 10 players that weren't able to adjust the field of view, they're going to be able to do so. So okay. I think the next pad, patch is going to be very cool. <laughs> And is there still a lot of a lot of work to do after the release? I don't know if you had to uh, to correct a lot of things that were not catched in the uh, in the testing. Yeah, we I think we, we will get a plan of uh, having some patches, trying to solve things and issues that you cannot. Uh, we didn't find, or perhaps because of, uh, for example, the accessibility options that we got suggestions from players and. We think it's a really good idea, so we implement them. Okay. Uh, for example, we also got um, an option to disable the lighting. In the there is a, a level that has a storm with a lot of flashing lights, mm -hmm. so we were able to disable that and that uh, too. And okay. these are the things that we we try to get uh, all the things that we could, but I, sometimes you. People that has a special need, they ask, tell us, and we say, oh, "Okay, yes, you're right, totally right. We are going to fix that now." So yeah, we, I think we we will try to fix also some issues with collisions, and there is always a place where a player is stuck, and we couldn't catch it uh, during our QA. So we will we will try to to fix those too, and things like that. Okay. So uh, I see people are are interested to to know um, if you had to pick your best and your worst memory from the development of Call of the Sea, well, what which would it be? It's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> they want some insight. <laughs> uh, uh -uh. I think one of the best was when I have many best memories. I'm going to say a couple because I cannot decide. Okay. I think the, the first one was when we got the the funding for the game. So we had a, a small demo of the game. Uh, we saw it around at GDC and, and Rob Fury said it was interested and we signed with them. It was we were so happy to be able to do the the, way, the game we dreamed about. And I have a very good memory also when we were on during pre-production and all the team was gathered together and we were starting, it was the kickoff of the game and we started brainstorming about the game and about the levels and I remember being so happy it was those old good times where we were we could be together in a room, so we spent a couple of days doing that, and it was it was amazing when you started to see everything coming together. Um, but memories, I I don't remember. Well, worst it doesn't necessarily mean bad, but it can be just not the best. <laughs> I guess it was a bad day when <laughs> when we we saw that Cyberpunk was going to be released <laughs> a couple of days after On the same we, launch window. <laughs> yeah, because we had we were we were working very hard to release the game at that time. We had a schedule and we didn't move the the dates and suddenly having a huge game like that releasing almost at the same time. We didn't knew what was going to happen. It, it was feeling like, okay, what what should we do now? Because we cannot uh, we cannot wait more because we go into Christmas and it's a very bad time. Also, is I think we released the later we could do, mm. latest. 
and delaying the game till January was like, no, <laughs> sorry, my cat. <laughs> so yeah, I think I remember feeling a bit, a bit of, of what, what should we do? What is the best course of action? Mm -hmm. uh, we we decided to to keep the the same schedule and move forward, and everything went well. So <laughs> I think we we took the the right decision. Yeah, yeah, I think it went better than for sure. Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> so if maybe so, Cyberpunk should have delayed because of Call of Duty. It was the other way around. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. So I managed to solve that one with a lot of um how do you say that I forgot my words now i'm too hooked into the game <laughs> <laughs> and i found um, a stone yeah yeah we also had a, a question um how uh, how easy or uh, was it to to produce the game for uh, for this uh this next generation of console I think it was, I won't say it's easy because it's not working mm. with a new generation. It's always has a lot of uncertainties, but we are working mm -hmm. with a real four engine. And I think it gave us a lot of, it helps a lot to bring the game to, to console. So I think it helped really a lot. And then you have to be sure that the performance is, is good. So we spent a lot of time uh, making all the graphics uh, with, uh, and making all the levels, uh, working with Unreal 2 to, to keep the frame rate at the, at the good, uh, at good frame rate. <laughs> so we did a lot of the um, uh, performance uh, tasks related to to be able to do that but we i think it, the team did a, a great work because you don't see the the art um, i mean the art is as good as it could be so you don't see anything downgrading is is fantastic we were able to in a game like this as i said you need a lot of different assets that are different <laughs> so you cannot you need to put a lot of details in many many different assets and we were able to not care uh, about, at all about the, the limitations, just put the game as we want it to be. Yeah, you could express yourself freely without worrying about all the, the performance and all, yeah. at least the limitations from the hardware. Yeah, you I, for um, there is no, no limitations, as you said. I think you just pressed <laughs> it very well. <laughs> <laughs> And it supports also the, the quick resume, probably one of the best things that have been done in those last years. Mm. Is this stone structure a yeah. hatch of some sort? Yeah, talking about so technology, so. Um, uh, it's on, on Game Pass, uh, PC and console. Do you plan to have it on xCloud? I cannot, I don't want to say anything because I don't remember how the conversations <laughs> are. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> at this moment is, I, I, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot reply on that like, like now because I knew at, this, uh, at some point there was a plan, but I don't know how, uh, how is at the moment. I think we, I believe so. We, we wanted to, to bring it there. Okay. And is it something that is done by the developer? You have to change something in the game to be able to run, or is it something that is done on the back end? I think, I don't know. Uh, okay. I, I don't want to ask things that I don't know because yeah. I make a mistake. I'm, I'm more on the on the game design and narrative part so mm. i'm careful with the technological questions yes. because i don't want to say something <laughs> that is not correct okay 
Okay, so here after I found that stone, I managed to get one level up and it's a bit less enjoyable already. So something not so good happened here. So the question had to come up at some point uh, from the chat. Uh, there's someone asking what's coming up next from Out of the Blue Games then. <laughs> We cannot uh, say anything yet, but what I can say is we want to keep doing the same kind of games with a good story, uh, telling something that is different uh, with puzzles. So that's what we are working on now. Okay, we, we okay. so we can, we can expect a game in the same genre. Okay. okay. Ooh, I remember this proposal. Yeah. <laughs> but I will not go too far in the game because some of our viewers have not done the game yet. So I, I know Tatiana does not to spoil mainly this mm. game. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those those paintings as well that we, we will see a bit everywhere. Hmm, there's a, there's quite an uh, an interesting question that that, that came up. Um, Fre Fred's asking, uh, what would you recommend to young people who want to become narrative designers? Hmm. Ah. What would be your best tips? Mm, I think there are several things to. First, they want to to be to write stories for game and be a narrative designer or game designer you have to start do, doing things writing creating games creating stories and uh, so now you have a lot of tools on uh, free tools that let you build games uh, from super simple simple games uh, just uh, 2d or conversations conversational i don't know how to say yeah. Uh, platforms like Inkle and, and all, all those platforms or even Unity or Unreal, they are free. You can build something very quickly with them. So my first uh, advice would be to do things, even though they are not great, but the more you do, the more you, you will learn uh, and with your from your failure failures, you will learn a lot. And then also I would recommend to to not only play games and look for uh, video games, uh, references in video games, but also try to look for uh, away from video games from for inspiration, like read a lot of books, read a lot of comic books, play a lot of different games, uh, board games, role playing games, movies. Uh, try to look for inspiration for your stories uh, away from video games. And that way you can get yeah, original and interesting ideas into the video game world and I think and then uh, there are a lot of resources online I think we live in a moment that you can get through the internet a lot access to a lot of people so look for uh, talks and uh, like the GDC talks about narrative mm -hmm. you will get a lot of advisor um, um, there, I think there's a lot of online resources for that so I think that, that yeah, those would be my three advices. Uh, I think there are three great advices you can give. We, we live in a day and age where most of, uh, uh, of resources of great quality can be found for free online. And, uh, and even the software, is, especially in the games, in the game industry, is, uh, is incredible to be able to create fully masterpieces with free assets. Yeah. So there's also another question asking if the story, um, which is so full of mystery, was inspired by, by Lovecraft. But uh, I mean, with a Cthulhu reference as an intro, it's it's. I think it, it kind of sets the tone. <laughs> yeah, we. It's, uh, yes, it's an, it has an inspiration from Lovecraft. 
but we wanted to to take a new approach because most mm -hmm. of the games are most, more focused on horror and and monsters and tentacles and very scary things and we wanted to bring to this game because as i said before uh, you need to look for inspiration outside the, the mm -hmm. games and i used to play a lot uh tabletop role-playing games there is a game that is called the call of cthulhu <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and we used to play a lot and when you play a lot uh, this game and that is more an investigation kind of game and you realize that the most interesting stories are the ones that doesn't have combat it's just uh, trying mm -hmm. to figure out how what the things happen so this is what we wanted to put the, into the game like this kind of of investigation or something that is dark is happening to to the expedition so you can you can think about the expedition like characters of a role-playing game <laughs> adventure of mm -hmm. tabletop mm -hmm. and also we wanted to tell the story that was because more related to the dreamlands more the a dream like uh, space where mm. it's not horror but it's more surreal because there are also there are stories about lovecraft that had that approach and we wanted to be a bit away from the cosmic horror where you are the 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 events escape your control so that's what is mm -hmm. scary that events that escape their control and we wanted to to say what if you can flow with those events you can understand and and you see that something is out of control and you overcome that what what would happen and that that was also a, a question that we wanted to have in this game that's okay. interesting yeah and the localization is also quite different. So most of the time in uh, Cthulhu stories or role-playing game, uh, that's more more most of the time it's in the, the same localizations. It's in US, etc. And here, it's totally different. So you manage to bring that as well. That's uh, yeah. That, that's, we that's great. we took it um, or mainly inspiration is one of the stories that most of the people that has played already knows probably and if you read the <laughs> most of the stories you probably know which one and part of that uh, in that story ha it happens part of it in in the pacific so we thought that would be really cool to to see what happened there okay and that's why we we went all the way to the pacific <laughs> So did you manage to find the lenses, Ludo? I'm I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I found some <laughs> some clues. Okay. And um, but may, I I don't know if I if I if I have to go too far in the game. So maybe we can ask the chat mm -hmm. if we if we if they want us to continue. Because if most of the players don't want to see the the rest and enjoy it by themselves, then. Uh, then we can uh, we can stop showing all those all those puzzles and by the way we we have a contest well, as well chad it's going to be up to you we also do have a contest we have a, a a giveaway with three months of xbox game pass ultimate So maybe we have to check if we found the the happy winner. Yep. Uh, I think it'll be faster if you can find it because <laughs> it's taking quite some time for me. Ah, uh, uh, wait. Um... That's a good question. 
otherwise for the for the gameplay no one has yet said that they don't want to see more of it they all seem to wish to see more Uh, here, the I, I have the name of the winner. I, I guess it's a it's a Twitter account. It's a XD Oxo. Here's the so happy winner. Oxo. XD Oxo. Is the who won three months of Game Pass Ultimate? Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so where was I? I was still in that one. It's not my preferred one. You were still uh, putting black spots. Yeah. On a, <laughs> on a rugged. Uh... <laughs> no, it's not you, Nicholas, who won, I guess. <laughs> So now that the, the now that the game has released, uh, what what games uh, are you playing nowadays? I I started with uh, this Coliseum that okay. I, ha oh, yes, <laughs> I yes. played it when it was released, and I didn't have time to to play. <laughs> um, it's good. I, Another I really heavy like story-driven the... game. Yes, because I <laughs> I st I'm starting with the games I I love, and then. And they, because they are not too long, they allow me to play several in a row. And now I'm playing Amnesia, the new one, it's Red Rubber. And then my next one is going to be oh, okay. Obradin. That is, I really want to play it. And on what do you play? You are more PC player or console player? It depends uh, on, on the time. Uh, I I cannot say right now perhaps more PC here, but I really enjoy the consoles. We it's funny because we have two TVs on our our living room. Yeah, one for me and one for my husband because we are both game developers and we have we both love love games so we want to, <laughs> to be able to play <laughs> it on on their own TV and also if I want to watch a movie he he can continue playing the console so yes so, so I, I don't have a preference I, I love both okay so and is your husband working with you or is working in something yeah he's the game writer of the game okay all right okay So that's great to have uh, constant feedback, even uh, even from from home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have a uh, one of the rooms is like a small office, and we have the bo both the tables and the computer. So yeah, we can we have like a small meetings together and try to to talk about the game and give us feedback, and yeah, it's good to have to have him there. <laughs> <laughs> Is he maybe playing right now? Oh, sorry? Is he playing right now? Yeah, but he's playing among us with some friends oh. right at the moment. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was worried because I hear him screaming. And I was wondering <laughs> if you can <laughs> hear him through the microphone, but I guess not. But I hear him playing with the friends. He hasn't been the the imposter yet. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I managed to solve that one. That's not a, an easy one. I've seen some cr screenshots that there was a grid. Is it possible that there were there was a grid and there is no anymore? 
Yeah, the, there was an issue with the um, with some shader, I think. So there's there will be a grid mm. in the next uh, patch. Ah, okay. There's yeah, a grid, yeah. But since it's solvable, I think the grid is just a small eight. So yes, yes, yes. We we can we can do it without. Yeah, and still some visions. Hmm. My God, what was that that I saw? What were those stars? And those statues, they are also inspired by Polynesian culture, or is it something invented? We try to get the Polynesian inspiration, I give it a um, um, marine, so it's like a, we, we take the, the original ones and put some, uh, mar I don't know how you say marine, inspiration, so shapes from the sea creatures. Um, so they look uh, like a, she a fish or... Okay. Yeah, you can go with marine. Okay. So, uh, as you were asking Fred on the chat, um, have a, have you already started a, a new game development? Just uh, just as Satiana told us a, a little earlier, she can't really tell us more about that. <laughs> um, we would love to learn more, <laughs> but we only know it's going to be in the same genre, and uh, and it's going to be a uh, story driven, still with a, a few puzzles here and there. And same and team? Of course, you are still. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, the same team. <laughs> okay. And of course, you are still continuing to fix bugs on uh, on Call of the Sea. <laughs> yeah, when re you release the game. The the work doesn't stop. You need to keep working on it for a, for a while. So I remember you saying um, in a in the interview that you had with Ludo in December that Indiana Jones was a, was an inspiration for the game too. Uh, having a Bethesda uh, announcing a new uh, Indiana Jones game, how does that make you feel? Wow. And what are your thoughts would, about that? I would love to, to do an Indiana Jones game. That would be a dream. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really happy and excited for this new game, I hope. And I just want looking forward to see what they do with the game. Mm. Yeah, but I remember watching the teaser and when you see the hat and the, <laughs> the whip, I go, wow. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> the hat, the whip. <laughs> I have reset it everything. You've also um, talked quite a lot about Cyberpunk being on the same launch window as Call of the Sea. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on all the launch of the game with your perspective as a, as a game director? 
You mean about the launch of Cyberpunk? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they probably released it a bit earlier than they should have, but I guess uh, I don't know. There's a lot of uh, probably things going on that we don't understand, like the investors requesting the, it being released, or a lot of pressure that the developers don't know. So I think uh, the AAA market is so different than what we mm -hmm. do because we are able to to decide everything and we can control things but in a such a huge team with a, so many people involved and so many systems those that game is huge so i don't know i guess if i was there i would probably say i wouldn't release the game um, um probably someone would have said to me there is no nothing else we can do we, sh we need to yeah, release now yeah. and i would say oh no <laughs> <laughs> Most of the developers probably had suffered a lot and knowing that, because you know, as a game developer, when the press tells you that something is not good in your game, it's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know how when the game is <laughs> not working and then mistakes, because sometimes it's not because you want to leave them, it's because there are other things that you make you, you either don't have time, you don't have money, you don't have mm. people or everyone is tired, you have to prioritize things that you, you are going to solve. And yeah, so many things that sometimes it's very difficult. There's always business issues that you haven't thought about or that come up uh, sooner or later. And, uh, and it's just not your role uh, as a developer working on your one aspect of the game yeah especially in big teams of 500 plus people <laughs> where where i guess when when you say i'm not proud of what i've done it doesn't really matter since it's not your decision if it's going to come out or not <laughs> uh while you were talking i've stopped playing I've stopped it after after the chapter two i've, I've stopped on the cliffhanger so we keep, <laughs> we keep the suspense <laughs> because if, if you don't stop me, I will continue until the end again. So, <laughs> so absorb it into the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, nice. I think we have we have seen a lot, uh, learned a lot of things with uh, with you. Things that we didn't know previously. Right. And. Uh, yeah, I think we have, we are, yes, it's yeah, almost two hours in. already. Yep. So I think we will, we will stop it really soon. Um, Tatiana, thanks a lot for being here with us and discovering the game and telling us all those little details about, uh, about the game. It's, uh, it, it's really nice. I think everybody enjoyed it. And do um, you have anything else to, to say to the to our community? Well, I hope uh, that you, for those that have played the game, thank you for playing and I hope you enjoyed it. And those who still haven't, I really hope you go and try it and, and that and we, we can bring you a, a good experience because we are here for you, for the players to, to, to have fun. So I hope we can achieve that. Great. Mr. Okay. Yuki. Yes. Well, uh, thank you again, once again, Tatiana, for being here with us tonight. Um, I mean, uh, it's always great to have uh, insight from, uh, from a developer directly about, uh, about his or her game. And, uh, and for that, I, I really thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Ludo, for playing us so well. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. <laughs> I, wouldn't... <laughs> I had a good role. I didn't I think we would make today. it up to chapter three. So uh, Neither I mean, do I. Neither you, do uh... I. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, uh, uh, so just thank you very much. Yeah, thank you both for for the chance of being here and 
um, being able to chat a bit about the game and telling how we we did everything. So thank you so much for for in, your invitation. Ah, uh, that's 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 very cool. You can come whenever you want. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I will just remind that uh, Call of the Sea then is available on the Game Pass. It's also available on Steam and GOG and uh, GOG. I don't know if we say GOG or GOG anyway. Mm. And uh, I highly recommend you to, to play it. I mean, uh, wait, wait, have you see, as you have seen, uh, when you start, you cannot really stop playing it. So. Mm. And uh, so if you liked uh, what, what the, the first time we, we have done this, uh, this live stream, if you like it, just subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Twitch channel, the Twitter account, wherever you can find us. And uh, we'll come back soon with some new content, uh, some new interviews with uh, an, another great game. And it will come very soon, probably next week or the week after. Mm. And if oh. we wish to keep up with uh, with information on uh, on you, Tatiana, or with Out of the Blue, where can we find you? Well, we have um, in Twitter. You can find us at uh, Out Blue Games. Uh, mm -hmm. My Twitter is Arilea, <laughs> and we have a website also for the game that is Call of the Sea dot com, where you can find all information about the game. Call of the Sea game. Great. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Call of the Sea. We'll put it directly in the description. It'll be easier. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it again <laughs> in the description. <laughs> All right. So, thank you both for being here, and thank you both for uh, helping with uh, discovering that game. It was really great. And uh, to everybody, see you next time. Bye bye. See you next time. Bye.